fall 2014. Welcome once again to the Black Learning Channel, heard every Saturday morning live here on TV, Black Learning Channel TV. My name is Ross Marvin, and I'm a teacher here at Pearl Academy, and we're in the science lab. I'm one of the science and mathematics teachers here at the school, and we thank Pearl Academy for hosting the Black Learning Channel venue where we're broadcasting this morning. We're focusing, and I'm going to go straight into the program because we had a little technical difficulty, but I think we have it solved now because I'm not hearing from our uh, director. But anyway, let's go forward. And our focus this morning is what you, the students, and the parents, and myself, the teacher, how we can all work together to make sure our children are very successful in their education this year and become very successful students in life. So I prepared certain things that I know that a lot of fourth graders, third graders, fifth graders, sixth graders, they sometimes have trouble in these, not all students, some students, and also the parent wants to know how can I get a grasp on knowing what should my child be learning in school. And students, I know you're interested in knowing what you should be learning and focus on, focusing on in school. So that's why this morning I have prepared a program that's going to get both of us and all of us uh, all on the same level for what we all should be knowing in school, uh, especially the students. I'm going to go ahead and start first with the students because that's where the tire hit the road. And parents, you got to make sure each day that you check your students' work of what they did in all their classes, and especially math and science. Check their notebooks because they are responsible to make sure they document what happened today in class. And if you don't see anything written in their notebooks, then that will tell you the level of involvement of your child in school. So you want to make sure that each day your child comes home, you check his notes, you check her notes, and the notes should be complete. And some of the things then we have to remind our youth, because they are learning at uh, elementary level and they're still learning in junior high school if they're through the high school. So our job is to help them know what they need to know in order to become successful students. First of all, every student can increase their grade level. This is for the parents and the students. Every student can increase their grade level one level without necessarily increasing their knowledge in math, but will at the same time be prepared to receive and learn what they would have to learn to have a good grade in math. And we're talking about A and above because all of our students are capable of achieving high levels of math and science, high level grades in math and science. So one of the most important things that our students and our youth have to make sure that we're on top of is that they cannot go to school without being organized. Organized. Organization is one of the most important things that a student has to focus on. You hear me? Because a lot of times when our youth reach into school, some students are not prepared to learn. And we know that there's difficulties outside the classroom, maybe they're not, they're not able in the dress circle, something like that. But even in the classroom, that's the difficulties I'm talking about. They don't have a binder. They don't have proper means to document what they're learning in class. So it's very important you, for you to have a binder, and the binder is organized neatly. And inside the binder, you have different tabs for different subjects. Each subject, each class you're taking has a different tab. And I'm going to get to 
at the spiral notebook in a second, but I'm starting first with the binder because a binder enables you to be organized and that's the first thing you must do in order to be a good student. You cannot be a good student without having your work and your notes and your homework and your desk and your work area organized. So, continuing on with your binder, students, what I want you to make sure is that you have a different sec section in your binder for different topics and different subjects. So, for instance, now, the first tab may be math, and I'm going to stick to math and science, and the second tab in your binder, it may be science. So, both of what I'm saying goes for both the math and the science subjects. So you have to make sure that when you go to school, you pay attention in class. And whatever the teacher writes on the board you, you have to write it in your notes. But the first thing you must put in your notes every day on the front side of the page, but do not start writing, taking notes on the back side of the page. You start every day class writing on the front side of the page. And on the top line, you must have a heading. And the heading consists of the subject, which is the class that you may in be in currently, could be math, put math on the top line to the left, and to the right you put the date. Very, very important. The date is very, very important because you got to keep the information that the teacher is teaching you in an organized manner. Remember this, teachers, you, because you're part of the Black, Black Learning Channel and part of the Rambi family. I'm going to tell you a secret of teachers. A teacher will never give anything on the test that they didn't teach in class. All right? So that's very, very important. So if you take good notes every day in math and science, that means you reach the class on time, you're ready to learn. You have your notebook open, you have your paper headed, you must be the first person in class every day that whatever information the teacher gives out, whether if it's written on the board or spoken, you must write that information in your notebook. And your notes have to be neat. You got to write neat. And make sure when you write the heading or when you write in the body of your notes, you do not. everything together in one paragraph. Give a space between the heading and the body of your notes. Vocabulary words, keywords, you must make sure you underline those keywords so they stand out in the future. Between different topics, skip a space in your notes. Make sure that everything you write in your notes, you write on the line. And parents, these are the things you want to check for with your child notes every day, the things that I'm mentioning now, because we give our t children a head start when we make sure that they are organized and that they know how to organize themselves, because before the learning starts, a student has to know where is he going to take his notes. A student has to have sharp, sharp and pencils and pens. He has to be ready to learn. So, once we have our children prepared to learn, that will give them a head start in the learning. And once we have them organized, and each day of class, so if a student is in school from Monday through Friday, each subject should have a day's notes. That means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you should have notes for math in each day, each of those class days. And parents, how you know if you, this is how you know if your child is doing right in class. You, are, you should be able to look at your child's notes and be educated yourself about what was taught in that class. That means you should be able to read your child's notes and understand 
everything that is written written in the notes for that day. And that will tell you that your child is doing right in class by recording everything that is taught that day. And the notes is so, so such such an important aspect of education. Documenting what is learned each day is so vital. And I'm talking to the fourth graders and the fifth graders and sixth graders and third graders and the middle school students. Let me tell you why. Taking good notes, organized notes with a heading, which is the subject that you're in at that time, the class, what's being taught, or sometime in elementary school, they don't change classes, you know, you still have a different section for your notes. And when you have organized notes, you will be ready to learn. So parents, you have to make sure that you can read your child's notes and if your ch child is not writing letters properly or numbers properly, you've got to give them extra practice in making sure that they're writing their letters and their numbers clearly. Don't expect them to be excellent writers, but at the same time, they should have space in between the each of their words. They should be able to write on the line. They should be able to write in paragraphs, meaning more than one paragraph instead of everything all in one jumble pile. Now why your notes are very, very important. And I want to share a story with you. As you know, I'm a mechanical engineer, got my bachelor's of engineering. 1987 from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. Minor in African history and also received a master's degree in industrial engineering from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. But while I was doing my degree in the 80s from 1982 when I started, 1988, I was involved in a lot of activities at university from being involved in the National Society of Black Engineers, also the Caribbean Students' Organization, also a DJ on the radio station. So I was very active at my school, but at the same time studying a very rigorous, demanding career, engineering, mechanical engineering. And how I was able to become a successful mechanical engineering is my notes is what saved me and my notes enable me to be where I'm at at this moment because I made sure every day I didn't miss school every day whatever was written on the board I made sure I had it in my notes I had my notes and I still have my notes from university now one Saturday I'll bring you and show you some of my engineer notes here on the black learning channel but I made sure I documented everything that the teacher said. And you, in elementary school and middle school, you got to do the same thing. Don't miss whatever your teacher in school writing on the board. Or if he said something or she said something that rings a bell and means something to you, you make sure you write it down. So what I did, I made sure in the physics, chemistry, calculus, engineering math classes, engineering classes. I wrote down everything that was written on the board. And when I was listening in class and something made, made sense, I made a note on the side of my page of my notes to help me. And then what I did is that no way did I understand all of that information the first time I received it, but it told me what was coming. It, was, it told me what I had to know. Your notes, I'm not going to say when I show elementary students how to do 
factor in that everyone is going to understand it the first time but you make sure you write down the steps the examples to do whatever is being taught because once you have your notes now your notes is an extension of your mind that's why it's so important we are human beings and human nature says yes maybe when we're in class we might get it and we understand it but once we leave class we go to a different environment and in this different environment different things happen and automatically we start to forget those things then that was learned in class for that day and it happens to everybody no matter what your age is or if you're a student or a student that maybe is trying to not fail it happens to everybody that when we leave class and we're not in the experience anymore our memory of that experience begins to lessen except the big favor for your memory the extension of your mind so that even though if you left class and then later on in the evening now the big favor you parents and everyone is that your notes now when you pick up your notes of what you are uh, recorded today in class everything you learned will come back to you you will remember everything that the teacher taught that day why because you took good notes and you made sure that when the teacher was given something that you didn't understand you asked questions so that that way you can have it clear in your notes so what happened is that in human nature we learn different things through repetitive behavior and the first time that we get the information is when we get the lesson for that information and we cannot make this time go to waste meaning that how it could go to waste is that maybe a student is not doing what they're supposed to do in the classroom taking proper notes doing their assignment and therefore now the, the class is over and there's nothing that this that student has to show upon what they had learned during this class session so with your notes your notes save you okay because your notes is an extension of your mind and then when you go home each evening you make sure you review your notes and if there's anything in that you don't understand make sure that next day that's the question to ask the teacher review your notes before you try to do your homework make sure that you read whatever little doctor and information in the math book or the science book before you try to answer the question do not try to do the math problem without doing two things and that's what I had to do when I was in university I had to go to class and take notes then review my notes and read the chapter that covers that information that is being taught that for that day before I started the homework problem that way I will have as much knowledge as possible to be ready for the problem so as we come to half past hour this is the black learning channel my name is Ross Marvin live from Pearl Academy in Atlanta Georgia and we're in the George Washington Carver Pearl Academy science lab new science lab here at the school and this week we we did uh, experiments our elementary students uh, my students uh, we did measurement experiments and we taught our students how to uh, measure the mass of different objects how to measure time and how to measure length in addition to that, they were
you're supposed to be able to calculate volume. So those were the experiments and the time experiments. And uh, I'm going straight on to the 12 o'clock. And we thank those who's out there listening. Make sure you call a friend and tell a friend to tune into the Black Learning Channel every Saturday morning, live, 10 a.m. to noon. And uh, I have to dig it up to our youths again. Mr. Mirror and our two friends did a lovely job where the first hour we heard from the youth where they have their own educational program and they do their own thing as far as educating each other and their peers. And the second hour, we have teachers and instructors who come in from uh, both uh, one say good afternoon to uh, my co-instructor who you'll hear next Saturday morning and that's uh, Secretary General Mary Bolter along with uh, Sister Brenda Clayton, First Assistant Secretary General for the UNIHDS Global Government. And uh, since we're in the midst part of the program, I'd like to also say greetings to our President General, the 10th President General, 9th Successor of the Honorable Marcus P. Fire Garvey, the Honorable St. George Jawara Baye. My name is Ross Marvin, and I am the President of the Dr. Julius Nye CDPM UNIHDL Atlanta Division 421. Uh, we made history by hosting the first UNIHDL convention. I can see my chair. The first convention in the state of Georgia, or you would say it was the 55th International Convention of the Government of the UNIA, and uh, it was hosted here in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was a big success. And we're here at the Black Learning Channel, and every Saturday morning, live TV, 10 a.m. to noon. So as I continue now, I hope our students, our youths out there, youths, I hope, and parents, I hope you both and all of us understand the significance and the importance of being a good note taker. Your notes is an extension of your mind because remember not everybody can remember everything some people have different levels of memory but your notes enables you to become the person that absorb absorbs the most information because remember I told you the secret a teacher will never give something on a test that he didn't teach in school teach in class and if you have documented everything that the teacher taught, you review it, you study it, you know it, you ask questions on those things you don't know, then you will become a rocket scientist, as they would say, or uh, a genius, as some would say, but you become responsible, as I would say. Because some people say, it's because you're responsible, you're a genius. Well, if that's what makes you a genius, we all can be geniuses. You, you can be genius too. And that's the goal of this program is to make sure all of our youth are genius. And I'm telling you the secret to become a genius and it's to be responsible, to be organized, to take care of whatever task or assignment is given to you and to do your best of your ability to accomplish your task and your assignment. And everybody won't know that maybe you weren't the smartest in the class, but your work will show that you're very intelligent and people will start calling you genius, even though you might not be smart in all areas and you just have a couple areas where you're excelling in, you be responsible to you to make sure you take your notes every day and do not take shortcuts. I see students in taking their notes, they take a lot of shortcuts. Math and science, you cannot take shortcuts. Math and science is something that we, you gotta be detailed, detailed, meaning, 
some students just write part of, of the notes because they say, oh, I understand what that is and so on. But when they look at the notes a week later when the exam is happening and they're reviewing, they don't remember what the other part was because they didn't write it. So parents, this next few minutes is for you. This is how each one of us as parents make sure that our youth are doing what they're supposed to do in school. And how we do that, we don't have to have conversation with them. Yes, it's good to have the conversation, but sometimes our youth might not be telling us the full truth. So, the proof is in the pudding, or the proof is in the notes. You look at your notes, your student's notes, your child's notes, for the day, whatever subject they may, may not be doing well in, or even in the subjects that they're doing well in. Look at their notes for that day. And at the end of the week, you should be able to flip through in the math, uh, notes for Monday. And I'm not talking about one or two sentences. Full notes, full page of information. You should be able to see Tuesday notes, Wednesday notes, Thursday notes, Friday notes. Now, without even speaking to your child, your child did well in school if you're able to learn what was taught on that day by looking at your child's notes without even hearing any words from your children, from your child. But if you cannot understand what is written in your child's notes, then you're going to have to make sure that your child is doing what they're supposed to do by either taking a visit to the school, sit down in the classroom, and you take the notes yourself. And by taking notes yourself, you'll be able to see the amount of notes that your child should have. And compare it to the notes that your child is bringing home each day. And that will give you a good idea if your child is doing right in class or not. Being organized is the first requirement to be able to take good notes. All these things I'm talking about would automatically lift your child's grade in math and science because whatever information they need it will be right in front of them. It's written in their own handwriting. They heard the presentation. They were involved in the hands-on activity of the goal for that day. So parents, if you start this practice from the beginning of the year, require your child be organized. Organi organization extends beyond the notebook. His, his desk. I can tell the students in school that have junky rooms. I don't have to go to your house to tell if your room is junky, each of my students. I look inside their desk and I look in their notebook and if their desk and their notebook is unorganized, is a great chance their room is also unorganized. Organization, organization, organization. That's what Dr. Kwame Nkrumah told us. We have to organize. But organization goes in every aspect of life. So youth, not only in school you have to be organized, but you got to be organized in everything you do for the rest of your life and you will be ahead in the game and you'll be ready to learn and you'll spend less time looking for what you need because what you need will be right in front of you in a chronological date order that makes sense because in order to understand the next topic you got to understand in math or science the topic that was taught before the current topic 
So there's a lot of information and my secrets of me not being a genius, but me being responsible has people praising I and I'm telling everyone you can be a genius too by being responsible and taking responsibility and being a person of your word and doing your homework they won't know that you didn't get straight A's through life they just see that everything that you are responsible for all the challenges that you have to do here at second grade third grade fourth grade fifth grade your homework your organization your respect for your teacher and your parents those are the keys to success you so there's no excuse and everyone can be a genius they call me the rocket man you can be a rocket scientist too so I I made some notes and I'm gonna go over my notes now and make sure that I shared from my notes everything that was on my agenda to share that was important another thing you you might have a planner where you write your uh, homework assignments in but in math and science the homework assignment you got to write on that day in addition to your planner you got to write it on the notes for that day so if yesterday was September 12th and when you were in school on Friday September 12th in math class for example you could always start out your notes on the front side of the page that's one thing I shared with you earlier in the program today and on the top of the page you should have a heading proper heading math and the date September 12th 2014 which was yesterday's date and you should skip a space don't write start taking notes right underneath the top line skip a space there's a lot of paper available and there's a lot of space you don't need to jumble up everything because it makes reviewing and relearning the information difficult when you cut when you bunch everything up together everything I'm talking about your notes so part of your notes and I didn't say this earlier, so you listen to me very carefully. Me being a teacher here and been teaching from since I was in New York at Acorn Community High School in Crown Heights, Brooklyn from 1999. One thing that students continue to ask me, even up to this day, they ask me, what was the homework assignment from the other day? Oh, I didn't get it done. What was the homework assignment from this and this day? Because now I'm giving out the grades and they see that they're missing this assignment, they're missing that assignment, they didn't turn in this assignment, they didn't turn in that assignment. There's one thing you can do to solve that problem. And this is what I tell my students. Every day I give homework. The homework is the last thing that you have written in your notes after you write your little summary for your notes. You make sure whatever homework assignment was given out yesterday, September 12th, in class for math, you make sure you write it on that note at the end of the note for that day. And practice this each day, each day in class. If you're in English or whatever subject you are, Whatever the homework assignment is, write it on the note that you took in class for that day so that it could be next week, it could be next month. In order to find out what the homework assignment was, was on a, on a specific day, all you had to do is turn to your notes for that specific day that you, you need the homework assignment for 
and you can know that day by looking at the top of your notes because the date would be here at the top of the notes and then you look through your notes towards the end of the notes and you will see what the homework assignment was for that day you wouldn't have to ask anybody what was the assignment you would never have to ask your teacher again what was the assignment because you're taking proper notes and you know what the assignment was and therefore now you will be able to do your homework and don't miss any homework so what I'm saying to all what I'm saying to all the elementary students and who are listening and watching listening on Harambe radio and watching on the black learning channel I'm telling you the secret to get ahead because this is the secret that I used when I was at the State University of New York at Stony Brook I made sure I was organized took good notes and I studied my notes very very important because your your notes is just a place where you can hold the information until you're able to go to it and get it back into your head sneak it into your head that's the purpose of the notes the notes is the holding place of information you don't lose the information when you have it documented and you can solidify your understanding of the information by studying your notes and then you will see that you become an A student. There's no secret. There's no magic trick to learning. It's a traditional, old fashioned way. You're going to have to do the work. The work of being responsible. The work of taking good notes. The work of being organized. The work of dating all your papers. The dates on top of your papers are so, so, so vital because say if you didn't have your notes, you, you took notes in binder and you didn't put it back in the right order, whenever you're ready, you'll be able to organize it because it has dates in it and, you can, and it has a subject name on top so you can organize it in the right way. So we got to make sure that our children, when they go to school, their time is devoted in class to learning and not trying to figure out things. We got to make sure that they're well prepared to learn. You, you've got to be prepared to learn. Math and science is something that if you turn your head for 15 seconds or 30 seconds or you don't pay attention or you're listening to your friend in class, you might lose or miss something that was important for you to understand in order to understand the topic that's being taught. So, parents, train, show, teach our children, your children, how to be organized. This is something that we got to help our youth with because we're not born, born into the world with the knowledge that we need to know but a lot of the things we need to know comes from learning comes from education so it's our job to make sure that our youth know how to become a good student and the first step is to be organized then it's to be a good note taker then it's to study your notes and solidify the information in your head. Parents, if you require of your child, children, to do these things that I've shared with you this morning, you would never have to ask the teacher what was taught that day or can I have that lesson for that day because your child will be a good note taker and you will see in your child's notes what was taught that day. And that's the level our children got to be on. Our children got to be on the level where they are so sharp and they are responsible and they do what they're supposed to do in class that 
we don't have to speak to them, but we can look at their notes for that day, and we can learn exactly what they learned. We can see what vocabulary words they learned. We can see examples of problems, math problems that they had to do, I mean that the teacher done, and they recorded in their notes. So the teacher always gives you in math an example of whatever problem they're asking you to do. So you make sure you write down that example. Don't take no shortcuts. Everything that the teacher writes, everything that the teacher say, you got to write and say. And then you got to look it over. And before the teacher goes on to a different topic or problem, if you have questions on that problem, you make sure you ask the teacher whatever questions you have. So that way you'll have full understanding of the knowledge that's being taught. So, looking over our list, we don't want to take shortcuts. That means not write down the full notes or not spell words properly. Spelling, very, very important. We got to know how to spell math terms. Whether if it's place value or whatever topic that is being taught. Other things, use that you got to be careful of is that you got to be able to do math in four different ways. Number one, you got to be able to speak math, speak the math language proper. For instance, if we had a decimal, two. Point one, we know that's not speaking math properly, but most of people in society may read a decimal 2.1 as 2.1. But as math and science students, we got to read it like we are scientists. And that's two, and wherever you see the decimal point in the number, you say the word and. That's the only place you say the, wor the word and when you're reading the number. So that number would be two and, and in the first place after the decimal, that's the tenth place, and the number that's in that place is number one, because we said 2.1, so that number read as a scientist would be two and one tenth, tenth, with a CA, tenth, with a C-H-S on the end, and this is part of. being able to speak math properly. Most of my focus today was being was on being able to write math properly. Writing it, taking it. And it was for both the elementary students and middle school students and high school students. If you uh, haven't uh, taken notes properly, definitely take the advice I've shared in the program and you'll become an excellent note taker and then automatically your grades in math and science would go up a grade level or more. You become a straight A student. Other things that you have to be careful of. You cannot talk back in class. Don't talk back after your teacher. You come there to learn, not to come run off your mouth. Have respect for your teacher and your elders. That's the African way. You do it the African way, you will become a great African. And that's our goal. That's my goal. I believe that all of our youth can become great Africans through education. Education is the key to your destiny. So I want to leave you with this little rhyme, youth. Youths nowadays, you've got to listen to me. Hey, yeah. Listen to me and hear my story. Cause life, it's like one discovery. Ka long, long ago, you was in your mama belly. And today, you're in school, doing your studies. Do your best because life isn't easy. The better educated you are, you will earn more money. So go to college or university.
SAT pause education's the key to your destiny and then you will be trapped in the poverty whatever your desire that you can be as long as you respect your mom and respect your daddy respect the creator whoever that may be and if you don't do this you'll be out on the streets your pocket empty you've got nothing to eat so go to college or university cause education's the key to your destiny and then you won't be trapped in the penitentiary stay away from drugs cause that's too risky no your friends don't keep that company be a person of your word for your dignity don't go around cursing cause curse you will be cause now a day you've got to listen to me hey ya listen to me and hear my story cause i want to be the successful in a society cause i want you to live for eternity so do your best continually and later on in life you will see what i mean yes i and this is ross marvin for the black learning channel today september 13th 2014 and we thank you for listening and do remember we'll do it again next saturday and every saturday 10 a.m to noon ross marvin signing off live and direct from pearl academy in atlanta georgia thank you for listening today yes sir